I'm going to demonstrate uh, some three active scales and I'm uh, doing it for one reason. I wanted to send a student who never played three active scales uh, to some example on a YouTube for the fingerings uh, and the ways to structure the three active scale. And to my amazement, I haven't found much at all. So that's why I'm making this video. For those of you who want to play three active scales, there are several types of fingerings. I will be using two or three notes per bow, slurred. Slurring is the easiest way to go in a scale, rather than playing each note separately. So here's G major scale, three octaves. fourth finger and return back the same way. Uh, the best way to play three octave scales so that they will, as I call it, come out uh, sounding good and comfortable if you use duplet rhythms, which is two notes per bow, four notes per bow, and so on, is to add a couple notes in the beginning and at the end. Uh, you can do it in a variety of ways. For instance, was one of them. Instead of doing uh, the turn, as we call it, which I just played, you can use the other way. And then you will repeat the upper note. And perhaps end again with a turn. Uh, there is, of course, a fourth way. Um, and so on. So in other words, you may use uh, more notes in the beginning than just going straight uh, the scale. That has to do with the number of notes that there are in the three octave scales. Another good way to play the three octave scale is in triplets. Then you don't need to add anything anywhere. It will all come out very well. So in three notes per bow. so on. So you will cleanly change your bow on the upper G and you will be able to change your bow on the bottom G as well using triplets. 3, 6, uh, 12, and so on notes per bow. This was one type of fingerings that I was using. The other type of fingerings is to, on E string, instead of using one two to one, as I was using so far, and then moving the fourth, of course, to use one, two, three, and then shift to the first finger. In this case, you will not be moving anything there, and you will come back exactly the same way as well. And then back, you return the same uh, way as in the other scale. Let's go to another scale. 
now it will be A major. And A major will go like this. Now we need to go back, and the way back we usually go here through the fourth finger. So from one, I will shift to the fourth. So this is the uh, most common fingerings that uh, we trained in Russia as a number one fingering for the A major scale. It, the same thing can be added, uh, used in A minor scale, of course, and I will play it uh, a melodic minor. Melodic minor is the minor in which we raise the sixth and seventh degree on the way up, and then we cancel it on the way down. And here I can use the same fingerings. And stop on the upper note. Or I could use the other fingerings that I haven't yet shown. And those would be using the third finger here. And moving fourth, like we did in the G major scale. Now, on the way back, we can use this finger on the way back, also move fourth. Now you have a different note. You cancel the sharp, and you cancel that other sharp, F sharp, now F natural. With the first fingerings, however, um, the way I, I use it to uh, come up. With the first fingerings, however, you can use uh, the similar return through the fourth finger. So that's the fingering for the A major scale. There are other fingerings, and for instance, a good example of other fingerings you can find in uh, Kurt Sussman House's video. Um, I like that video very much. You can, that's a different type of fingering that he gives there uh, for the A uh, major scale. Now I will show you a scale that starts from the second finger. The lowest possible scale on the violin with the second finger is B flat major. And here I will show you the turn or the beginning of the scale, again, to be played in duplets. Uh, and it will go like this. So you may use it, uh, these fingerings to the come back, exactly the same fingerings as we used for the A major scale, which, you, uh, which means that you're, you have a big shift on the E string and you return into uh, the third position here in this case. Or you can use other fingerings to come back in this scale. So here we are in E string, this is our B flat, and we climb up as two, one, two, one. Again, we move fourth, and on the way back, I 
will go right now to the third finger and one more time to the third finger. This way I reach the first position right away on E string. In many ways that's more beneficial because when you play scales in pieces, uh, you most likely will be returning all the way on the E string. It sounds better. Uh, you also may, noticed, uh, may have noticed that I use open strings on the way up. Uh, some uh, schools, so to speak, uh, some teachers uh, in Russia especially, it was very prevalent, uh, taught that on the way up we use open strings for better sound and on the way down, uh, returning, we use fourth fingers all the time to cover those open strings. Uh, some teachers uh, teach it exactly the opposite way. Uh, what's right and what's wrong, there is no right and wrong. It's a matter of preference and in fact you should study both methods. Playing open strings on the way up, playing open strings on the way down, fourth finger on the way up, fourth finger on the way down. The good news about fingerings for B flat major scale that I have just demonstrated. You may use the same fingerings on pretty much every other scale that is left that can start on a G string. So B flat, B major, C major, D flat major, D major, E major, all of those scales you can, if necessary, start on, D, on a G string with the second finger and then follow the same uh, re uh, recipe for the fingering. However, the uh, further up you go, for instance, D major, I would probably um, uh, maybe not do the first shift on A string. Sometimes I would, but uh, instead of using this way of fingerings, uh, you can also just do all of your shifts on E string. You could do, by the way, the same with B flat major. Um, but any, both are fine. On the way back, when you come back with these fingerings, I like to use the extension of the fourth, on, especially on the half step. Uh, and then here on the way back, I would definitely shift to the third finger, not to the fourth, because you're too high up. And on the way back. And then you continue course shifting to the first position. Oh no, we didn't go to the first position. Sorry, we are staying in the third position. Uh, so that is, uh, that these are our fingerings. However, could you start the D major scale with open string? Of course you could. So here then, if you start with open string, I would shift to the third position right here. And then continue with the fingerings of two, one, two, one, two, one, until you reach the position in which you will move your fourth finger. Uh, then return back, three, two, one, three, two, one, and uh, here, actually, you will return back to the first position. Um, so, in general, if you want to play three octave scales, you need to know how to shift from second finger to first on E string or on upper strings. Also, from third finger to first, you should be able to uh, move your fourth finger half step or even whole step returning back when you play uh, melodic minor scales. Um, and that's pretty much it. On the way back, we sometimes return using our fourth finger. It's a larger shift. Most of the time we use our third finger on the way back and sometimes going to third position or down to first, we also use to one to two. I hope that this small tutorial on three octave scales has been useful to you and that you will know how to start playing three octave scales 
And one other last thing before we finish. Uh, please do not think that you need to play the scale, any scale, using any type of book. The best way to play scales is to think of what fingerings you want to use and then use those fingerings. So in other words, you think up the fingerings or you take them from this tutorial, you memorize them by watching what I'm doing, and then you don't have to use any books. In fact, when, uh, when I grew up uh, back in Russia, uh, that's exactly what we had. We only used books to learn the notes of the scale. Uh, so basically use the book maybe for one octave scale and two octave scales in the same position. Once we started shifting, I don't remember having any books. My teacher usually will give me, uh, would give me the uh, fingerings at the lesson, just like I did right now to you. I would memorize them and then practice that at home. And believe me, that's the best way to learn scales and to play scales.